Oh. Oi. That was a lot. Too much. That's... <laughs> Explain yourself, Zach. Drilling holes in our boat never gets any easier, does it? Yeah, really not great. Got a little um, aluminium filing in his eye. For those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Haley last March after saving for years. And after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, oh, we ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, the lows, and absolutely everything in between. Because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. Okay, so the last few days here in Grenada have been pretty busy. We've been running around contacting different companies about different boat jobs and I'm gonna not go into too much detail because Zach over here has drawn a beautiful diagram. Look at that. Hello. And yeah, he's gonna explain exactly what we're having done. So I'm gonna go over the problem and why we've started doing some of the work we've been doing in Grenada because I think it will make a lot more sense. Just a disclaimer before this, I'm not a trained rigger or sailboat maker whatever so take all of this with a pinch of salt i'm going to leave a link in the video description to a video by a guy called the rigging doctor it's a really good video and it kind of breaks down a lot of the pros and cons and he did a really really good job probably better than i'm going to do right now of explaining why we've come to this conclusion so our problem is at the moment downwind sailing in tailey is good we cross the Atlantic absolutely fine and we could carry on going around the rest of the world but we think that we can have a slightly better downwind sail setup. So with sails on our boat we've got at the moment our mizzen, main and our genoa which is furled in this photo here. Going downwind we tend to not have the mizzen out at all and just have the main and Genoa out. We have had the Mizzen out before and just the Genoa to balance it. These are all great, but the more sail area you have to the bow of a boat, the more balanced it tends to be. So getting pushed like that, you're getting pulled through. The trouble is if you're getting pushed downwind by the main or the Mizzen, what tends to happen is with autopilots, or especially the autopilot that we've got at the moment, we're hoping to change that at some point, it pushes the stern out and so it kind of corrects. So our autopilot is a real difficult time and I know a lot of other ones do going downwind. We've seen a lot of people and talked to a lot of people who've got twin head sails and basically set and forget those for long downwind passages. So you'd have them both out on whisker poles. If you don't know what whisker pole is, it's basically when you're going downwind, it pulls out the clue of the sail. So you'd have a pole going from the boom about here to the clue to the bottom of the sail there, pulling out so it doesn't luff when you're going over waves or anything like that. So there's two types of rigs that we could get. We could either get a cutter rig, which is another head sail which would go anywhere from down here to about halfway up the mast to the spread is normally about there. That's great for going upwind, beam on and downwind, but it's nowhere near as big as the Genoa that you've currently got. The big downside of having a, a cutter rig like this is you've either got to have reinforcement points on the mast here, so extra plates to stop the mast warping because this is pulling down, or you've got to have things called running backstays. Basically, every time you tack, you've got to take off a wire and attach another one, and it's just a big faff, and it's a lot more work than what we're thinking of adding. The other option that we've got, which is the option we've landed on, is going for a Solent rig, and this would mean having it fairly close to the very bow of the boat, going all the way up, just about as close to the top of the mast as we can get. As it's up there, the current two backstays that we've got that go down there and down there can support that no problem. We don't need to make any other modifications. We also need to add mounting points. We need to add a deck fitting down here, a steel bar that basically goes across there, and another chain plate at the bottom of the one that we've got here. Bolt all that together, run a new cable from the deck all the way to the mast. We've got a mast fitting that we'll have to rivet in up there. Obviously get a furlex and everything like that as well added. The big benefit of having a Solent rig, as I've said, is you don't have to add extra backstays or anything like that. 
the mast we have to take all the load that's already on there. And with it being so close to the other, our pre-existing Genoa that we've got there, the sail that we can get can be a lot bigger than the cutter rig. I think we're going to go for a slightly smaller sail than our current Genoa, so we can use it in heavier winds. So I think we're going to go for a jib instead of a Genoa, so slightly smaller and have the clue of the sail slightly lower, so it's better at going upwind. So we don't want to have an exact same sail as that. We want it to be a fairly similar area, so we're nice and balanced going downwind, but we're going to, I think, have it slightly different. We're talking to a few people about that at the moment, so it's not set in stone, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at with what we're doing with Taylor at the moment. So we've just talked to the stainless steel guys, we've talked to the riggers. We won't have the sail in Grenada, but we're hoping to have it next time we do long downwind passages. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, Becca, can you think of anything I've missed off? One of the other reasons we want it is because... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, go on. Yeah. <laughs> because we can reef from the cockpit. When we were sailing across the Atlantic, we can reef the genoa from the cockpit, the mizzen from the cockpit, but the main we have to go to the mast, which is fine, but when the weather gets worse and at night it's just not... We, we could rig it up so that you could reef the main mm -hmm. from the cockpit, but the main also chafes when we're going downwind, so we can't have it all the way out, so it's not a great sail to do downwind sailing with. If it's yeah. like the, on our boat at least. On our boat at least. On a lot of other boats it's absolutely fine, and people use that setup going thousands of miles they don't have any issue with it but mm. it doesn't really work with our boat at the moment and another reason I've missed off mm. is why we want another head sail is a big thing yeah. it's contingency mm -hmm. so at the moment we've only got one up there and if that broke or ripped or anything for any reason we would be it's our best sail our Genoa it's it, our powerhouse it, it pulls, pulls the boat us, along yeah there's a whole load of reasons why we've come to this conclusion but yeah it's going to be Mm -hmm. A big project, but it will look amazing as well. We're going down with two big pulled out head sails. Really so, excited. Yeah, that's the basic plan. Yeah, well done. Go halfway as we were coming up to him, and I was like, oh. The next morning, it was time to pick up the Delta and head into the dock. We had chosen Spice Island Marine in Prickly Bay to get the work done at, for a multitude of different reasons. There was a riggers there, a stainless steel fabricator on site, a budget marine outside, and a multitude of other hardware stores just a short walk away. And we had heard lots of stories about how sheltered it was and how friendly the team were. Today, we're getting some stainless steel work done, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> the guys were just on here this morning just measuring up a few other bits and like figuring out how they're going to do their end. But I got this from the riggers, which is going to be our mast mount. What we're going to do, I've talked to the riggers and I've talked to Mads from Sail Life about this as well. I'm going to go up, lay this on the mast, draw around mm -hmm. this, do some points there, point there, connect it up with a lovely ruler that I've got, and then I'm going to drill down that whole line. Dremel it out so it's nice and square and just keep dremeling out, putting this in, dremel out, putting it in, see if I can get it in like that. Yeah, sounds great. Right, I'm finally making some headway now. I don't know if you can see that that well. The camera's currently attached to the bag, so I can't really bring it up any further, but I finally got some good pilot holes all in there. I'm gonna come in with a big drill bit now and properly start getting into this and getting this all fixed in. So finally getting there. It turns out all of our old drill bits were absolutely rubbish and really rusty, but these new ones, Oh, that's in the bag. That's pretty good. So it's a, a fair bit later this evening now and the guys from the stainless yard came and took some cardboard cutout templates of the chain plate we've already got, which is a really good sign. So we're really happy that's happened. Zach was up the mast fitting the masthead fitting for the second force day and it was all going very well until I heard a yelp and stupidly it's so annoying because he was wearing his sunnies up there all the time and we know how important it is to wear the correct eyewear when you're doing jobs like that but if I'm honest it just completely slipped our mind when he went back up and didn't have them and yeah really not great got a little um, aluminium filing in his eye so I had to they just started work behind me on this big 
run runner thing but yeah he had to come back down and I had to irrigate his eye with saline eye wash for a while until it finally came out but yeah pretty scary um, thought we were gonna have to take a trip to the emergency room here but luckily nurse Becca got it out but let and learn always wear eye protection when you are doing any kind of work like that even if you think you don't need them just wear them easy anyway we are now that's almost done he didn't go back up after that but that is almost done and we've got some friends coming over in a bit we made the cockpit kind of nice we really, at some point it'd be so nice to have some actual cushions rather than just blankets but I've got to start somewhere explain yourself Zach well there's a boat over there in the mangroves which is tied up and this one here has definitely jumped off it um, I think they were chasing something and just made our way to our boat and these two other dogs have joined now but they look they don't look like strays no they look but then these ones aren't wet hey hey come come but that they're so tame look at them all See, look at their ears them. yeah Oh, that other one looks like a fox, Zach. Yeah, sit, sit, foxy boy. Foxy boy. They know each other for sure, Zach. Oh. oh. I, know, I know, I still don't know you that well. Good boy, hey? You're very well behaved now, aren't you? Now the others have wandered off. It's because they don't like you. It actually turned out to be a funny story to how those pups got there. They live on a boat in the mangroves and often jump off and run round to the yard. We had assumed that they had never done this before, so try to herd them up and put leads on them. Is that, is that going to be sufficient for you or not? Which, when their owner came to collect them, found very comical. Never a dull day. Come on. Gosh, imagine going out for dinner and coming back and all your do dogs have jumped off and swum to shore. The stainless steel guy's just got back and he's just delivered the first part he's fabricated today and it is stunning. So this is going to be the base plate underneath the deck. Mm -hmm. And this is the bit he's fabricated for the deck, which is wicked because we asked him to have quite a similar design to what we've got already up there, and this is super nice. The guy turned up and Zach was like, wow, you're a spectacular welder, and the guy like blushed. We've <laughs> got these. Big boy bolts. No. Okay. Alright, I think I'm going to go to the shop and pick some out. Yeah, I'll come with. Yeah. <laughs> Show me your baby. Let me look at it. Yeah, you, like, you like that? Yeah, it's nice. It's a bit grubby, but it it's... Is. Um, it's my hands are grubby. <laughs> You're a grubby boy. All right, so it's blazing hot up here, but I've just got all the rivets in now. I'm missing one there at the moment. I think it's in the bag, but I can't find it. But I can't use the uh, rivet gun that I've got at the moment because it's just hand-powered, and for the life of me, uh, my grip strength, I can't, I can't actually uh, bend the rivets enough to break them and snap the ends off so we've got a friend next door who's lending us a hydraulic crimper which makes my life a lot easier. Once that mount was done it was time to locate a furling drum. We had scoured marine stores online, the land of eBay and every chandlery between Antigua and Grenada and had absolutely zero yeah, luck yeah, finding yeah. one until the rigger casually mentioned he had the exact year and model that we already have at home and would happily sell it to us. What are the chances? It needed a bit of love but that's nothing that Zach can give it. That's really cool. Oh, a bit of grease, but... Yeah, but you can just put grease in that little thing yeah. anyway, can't you? We'll take that part and... Service it. Yeah. Yay, what a success story. Yeah, really, really good. I can't believe it's actually the same as well. Yeah, that's that really... Works. And it's actually really nice because ours is, like, aged, that's aged, so it will blend in. Just taking apart the fur legs that we've got. I'm just cleaning up a few bits because it's a bit dirty and we need to remove this old inner protector and get this all off, so I just need to do those bolts. But, yeah, it's a pretty good bit of kit apart from being really grimy but I don't know what happened to this and the last boat but it's a win for us oh yeah with the furlets cleaned and serviced, it was time to head to the bow and start drawing a template for the new chain plate.
Now, when we say that drawing an accurate template on not only a dinghy that is moving around, but also a big boat that is, you guessed it, moving around, it's difficult. We mean it. But after about 675 iterations, we were finally happy and it was time for our drawing to be converted to steel. <laughs> I'm just gonna go back to the boat and check this actually fits the existing one in the slot there. It's gonna clean it up, drill it, and then there we're gonna install that. Almost. Yeah, so it needs to be a bit more fair. How good is that? Now we have two dots there and there. There's a bit of like grub. Right word, grub maybe. There's a bit of grub around. So once we do the dry fit tomorrow before we do the proper fit, we will take all the rust marks and grub off before we mount it properly. But that was pretty difficult because what it is, is the other chain plate isn't directly in the middle. So this one also is slightly off to the side and the more kind of plates you have down, the more apparent it looks that it's not in the middle. So we've just done our best and that's all that matters. Bloody hell, that's a, that's a hole in our boat. So we have just about finished for the day. As with any boat job, bow is a tip, but just giving it a quick tidy. But we are absolutely delighted with the results. I think we had this vision for months about how it would look and we didn't ever, especially this morning, I think when we started getting prototypes of how it was gonna look, we didn't actually think it would ever look how we really wanted it to. And then through a lot of templates and communication with the team at the stainless place and Lots of tweaking it actually, and polishing, and it just looks like it's always been there. I think. I'm so happy. So yeah, that's a really nice. It's been a long, hot, sweaty day, but to be that stoked about the results is just makes it all worth it. Do you agree? Yes, yeah, it's getting there, isn't it? Definitely. So a few bits left, but we'll do those tomorrow. For now, I think we're going to go let our hair down, cool off, and jump in the sea. <laughs> Remember this thing of beauty from earlier on in the vid? Now that the other bits are all underway, it was time to mount it. So I've got I've got two schools of thought in my head at the moment. Yeah. Either we just mount it on the teak, drill holes, bolts, everything like that, put it through, or we pull up the teak and have the fin of this just sticking out. Oh, wait, I would definitely mount it on top of the teak. Okay, yeah. Do you think it would be a bit more of a better fit, I guess? Yeah. Otherwise, you guys just end up with um, more of a situation where water can get in under the teak. So. Yeah, all right, yeah, that's fair enough. Our forwards one is like that. The teak is, the teak is covered over like that. 
on the forward one. But yeah, we don't. But need yeah, to we don't need. To, you know, we can just keep it simple. But yeah, my my thought with this at the moment is just obviously mount it in the place where we want to do it, and then just basically hold this on the deck and so the the drill bit goes down straight and just drill through these holes in there to make sure like it doesn't like go off at an angle yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and just make sure we've got a long drill bit for this which we might have to go and get one yeah that's fine two things about mads he's incredibly generous with his time but also loves diy like a lot <laughs> so it took no convincing for him to pop over and give us a hand yeah, awesome. Famous last words. <laughs> and it looks, it does look nicer on that little, like, it looks like it's meant It'll to be there. Maybe less of a bracket we have to do as well at the bottom for this. And also it won't collide with, yeah, with this guy. That looks pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, we're just trying to remove a screw in the deck here so we can drill a pilot hole and see what it's actually made of. Yeah, ready? Yep. Oh! oh. <laughs> That looks a pretty nice screw. That's long. It's way longer than the other ones. Slide down there. Hey, something. This is so exciting. <laughs> it's all nice and dry. Wait, sh hopefully it should be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm through. Just. <laughs> nice. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, the deck's actually in quite good nick. I was really worried we were going to find a bottom point or something. Yeah. Good old TA Lou. We'll send you the first photo of the wing on wing when it comes up. I'll be so jealous. It's so <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Can't wait. It's going to be so, because even with this out on a like pole, it's so big, it takes up like your whole field of view. Yeah. But Zach's been dreaming of this day. Well, not even this day, but like just getting it started for so long. <laughs> Mads, again, has got a good idea of drilling the holes slightly bigger, filling them thick in epoxy with some fiberglass cut up in there, making it nice and strong. We'll leave it for 24 hours. And then tomorrow we'll come back, re-drill out the holes with this one, which are a good size, countersink them a little bit, put the seek effects on it, bolt it down, stick it down, and then it'll be pretty much done and ready to go for the next bit. Yeah, and why are we epoxying it? To make sure that the wood and the balsa, we think it's a balsa core in here that we've got at the moment, doesn't get wet or yeah, moldy yeah. or anything like that from water. So this will just make sure that it's all tight. tight. Good job. Nice, go for it. Bloody Ikea scissors. Oh, are they Ikea? I think so. I don't tell you about that. I don't want to obviously pour too much in and then have, I can't pour it back once it's in here. So oh. why don't I do a little bit and then I can top it up. Top it up. Right, I'm going to pour a bit in here. Right. Oi! That was a lot. Too much. That's... <laughs> Obviously, pour too much in and then have. I can't pour it back once it's in here. So, no. why don't I do a little bit and then I can top it up? <laughs> I thought you were gonna go like a little bit of butter. <laughs> it's only like 60 quid back of that thing. It's all right. <laughs> nice syringe, Becca. That was rubbish. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, it's not sucking up. <laughs> Mainly air in there. Oh, it's cracked I'm gonna have to, or. I don't know. I'm gonna have to get it. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Wait, so how much yeah. is this? So, okay, this is fine. This is four. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do one. We need to get some new syringes, Becca. Okay, there you go, that's better. Is that even stuff up? Yeah. There you go, that's five. Beautiful. Okay, ten. Okay, I'm gonna hold my breath. Yep. Hey, tell me when to stop. Sitting up when... Can I breathe yet? <laughs> you can breathe yet. You're not in the danger zone, Zach. I'm taking all face for this, Becca. Yeah. Oh, so definitely more than that, I think. Oh, right, let's just get this yeah. stuff in there. Okay, oh wait, we need to be able to hold one. Oh, yeah. You guys should be bakers. <laughs> Pour down one side. That way the air can escape from the other side. That's a cool trick. We just poured the 
epoxy in the holes and now we're just hammering it to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. So this is the epoxy that we put in yesterday. It's been about, how long do you think it's been, Becca? Oh, probably like 18 hours. 18 hours and it feels pretty solid. It feels really solid on the inside. What we're gonna do is just drill down a little bit. If it feels a bit tacky still when we're drilling, we'll stop and leave it for a bit longer, but it won't affect it because this is just trying to keep the wood from getting at all wet when the mm -hmm. bolts are in it. So we're gonna drill down a little bit and just see what it's like. But I'm gonna make a pilot hole I'm going to draw out one a little bit bigger, which is the size of these. These holes are even bigger, so we're going to try and get dead in the middle of each one. Yeah. Drill down, and then the wood should be beautiful. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Making it kind of hard for me. Another chain plate success. Now just to measure the new wire. 44 foot and two inches. 44 foot and two inches. 44 foot and two inches. And have them char grill our anchor locker. <laughs> just kidding. We're on the home straight now. everything yeah bring that to you yeah. okay yeah. is it on there fairly well so I, I can be a bit rough with it yeah, yeah it's not coming off oh, okay wow yeah nice, nice one <laughs> get some air <laughs> so this is our I don't know what you call it, it's like internal bracket. So we've got our deck fitting, if you imagine that's our deck there. And this is our new chain plate, so we'll actually get that way around. So deck fitting, chain plate on the very bow of the boat. And then this is just next to our current um, deck fitting for our current Genoa. Awesome. Yeah, look at that. He went in there and welded this all together. Very, I mean, it's dirty at the moment, the world, but I know he's going to tie this up now, so. Yeah, how nervous were you on a scale of one to 10? Well, no, I've just moved oh, it now. Oh, you put it back now. We had the fire extinguisher out and ready. There's a lot of smoke coming out here. One of the things got onto the GRP. It didn't really cause any damage. It was all wipeable, but yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give this to him now and he can finish this off. And this is the last thing that he needs to do. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna give this to him now. Awesome. Right, wow. that's all for now. Sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger, but trust us, next week is a big one. We're talking storms. Now, it wasn't a hurricane, it's very close and it passed through St. Lucia and Martinique overnight. Big waves, and you aren't ready for this. Termites. Thousands of termites in there. Huge ones with massive wings, and they're landing all over our boat. And for those that don't know, termites are just the worst for wood, and we have so much wood on the boat. And bedrooms everywhere. Eek, till then.